Hello YouTube. Tonight I have a repair project going on up here in my shop. Never quite as exciting as the upgrades, but sometimes the repairs are necessary. I've got my shop air compressor here behind me, and tonight we're going to be changing out the magnetic starter. In. I've owned this air compressor for about 10 years, and I bought it used, paid a few hundred bucks for it. And this is a really heavy duty industrial machine. It is single phase. It has a true 5 horsepower, 1800 RPM motor on it, two stage uh, compressor head with inner and after coolers on it. And uh, I have this thing set up with a pressure switch right here. It goes off at 170 on, on at about 150. And then uh, that controls a magnetic starter up here on the wall. Um, it's also equipped with a automatic tank blowdown. So this actually drains the condensation in the tank when the compressor first turns on and then during the when the compressor is running about once every two minutes it blows it down for a second. So, so a good heavy duty industrial type air compressor. Uh, it's worked great for me. I never had any problems with it. it uh, it'll run multiple air tools at the same time. So the other day I came out here after work and my air compressor was running and there was an oily haze in the shop and the compressor was, was really hot. It had clearly been running all day long. I don't really know for how long. Uh, and the pressure relief had lifted and it was uh, all partially blocked with ice. It obviously been relieving all day long and the discharge was partially occluded so it wasn't relieving as much pressure as it should have and tank pressure was around 200 PSI, uh, quite a bit higher than it should have been. And Initially, I suspected the pressure switch, so I took the cover off that, tested it. The contacts were open. Uh, it was telling the magnetic contactor to turn the compressor off. But it turns out that the contacts inside this contactor were, were fused. I wanted to make sure that my motor wasn't going bad and drawing too much current, so I went ahead and used my clamp-on ammeter and tested the current flow. It was about 22 amps, which is right in line with what the motor should be drawn while it's running and I double checked to make sure I didn't put the wrong size magnetic starter in here and this magnetic starter is rated for about 20 percent more current than what this motor is rated for so uh, really what it is is it's just a case of a worn out part uh, a little disappointing I bought this thing new when I put the compressor in it's uh, and it's a good Siemens one unfortunately it uh, just didn't hold up for me so to replace this I'm actually pursuing uh, buying a VFD something that I can do a more soft start on the motor and also program in some safety set points. But uh, it's going to be just a little while before I get my hands on one of those. They're pretty expensive and I'm trying to find a used one. So in the meantime, I have purchased a different magnetic contactor. bought this cheap one off of eBay. It's a Chinese one. I really don't know how reliable it's going to be, but uh, uh, we'll go ahead and set it up tonight and install it. and. Hopefully we can we can make it work for us. Now, an intelligent person might say, uh, you know, why don't you just unplug your air compressor? That way, this could never happen. If you're not out in the shop, you don't need compressed air. Uh, may as well just unplug the air compressor and leave the power down. And yeah, it's good advice, you know, and and it's advice that I follow during the summer. If I'm not out here working in the shop, the air compressor is unplugged. It, it can never turn on and run all night long. Uh, unfortunately, during the winter time, I have a waste oil furnace that I built and it requires compressed air to operate. That's this furnace right here. And it uses about two CFM when it's operating. Uh, I keep my shop heated and dehumidified. I got my boat out here and a bunch of other tools. I got a lot of carbon steel stuff. So I like to keep it heated and dehumidified. And to do that, my air compressor needs to be running. Hey, these are the wiring diagrams that this thing came with. Uh, they're pretty rudimentary. You can tell they've been translated from Chinese, uh, but fortunately the magnetic contactor is a pretty simple device. So it's, you can think of it just basically as a relay. You got your contacts right here. Your control coil is these two connections down here. So the pressure switch is going to apply voltage to that. When it does, it closes this contactor, which sends power right through here through the overload out to our compressor motor. So really pretty easy job wiring. I'll take our uh, our line one and line two in from our main power and put it in here. I'll hook our compressor motor up to these two and I will hook our pressure switch up to these two connections right here. Actually, I'm gonna go one from uh, this line down to here. And that ought to do it. We'll go ahead and get to work.
I've already got my pressure switch off. Everything's wired up here, so we'll go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. All right, that's it for this project. We got our new magnetic contactor wired up and it's working properly. It shut the air compressor off just the way it was supposed to. I didn't hear any kind of strange fluttering or electrical noises or anything like that. So it seems to be working just the way it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this Chinese contactor here at least for the next couple months until I can get my hands on a good VFD. And if I run into any issues with it, any problems or defects or anything like that, I'll go ahead and post a follow-up video on my findings.